All right, Shalom, Shalom, giving our praise, honor, glory, and worship to Yahweh, Bashim Yahusha, Bashim Chakudash, the honor to the elders and the apostles that do well overseeing the tabernacle of David, which are the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. And greetings and salutations to you, Akim, a potent testimony of our Lord and Savior Yahusha, in both truth and in sincerity. All right, this is a um, servant out of Great Millstone, Atlanta Church. Lord willing, with a lesson of uh, exhortation, edification, um, and regarding mercy and being merciful to others that we can receive mercy. Um, so this is John chapter 8. Um, I'm going to briefly paraphrase uh, the verses prior. This is when the Pharisees bring forth a adulterous woman that was caught in the, the act of adultery to Yahweh Shah to tempt him um, to make... Uh, that they may have uh, a reason to accuse him. All right, jumping into verse 7. So when they continue ask, asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him first cast a stone at her. Right, so, you know, when you consider, you know, those of us, you know, you see people around you and, you you, you know, you know maybe, you know, your woman or your, not saying if your woman commits adultery, you know, obviously leave her. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm making a point uh, of, you know, exercising mercy for those who make certain mistakes, for those who ha maybe don't have conduct that is up to par in a certain set, um, scenario or situation, just as Yahweh Bashim Shai has had mercy upon us. I'm not advocating dealing with a woman after she commits adultery, you know, I'm letting that be made clear. Uh, but the point is, have mercy unto those that you ultimately can receive mercy from your house shot. All right, I'm going to continue to read. It says, verse 8, and again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. And they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest even unto the last. And your shot was left alone. And the woman standing in the midst, and your shot had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman. He said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Yahweh Shah said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. All right. Now the Lord, he understood this, he understood the circumstances at hand, but he, what he chose to show mercy. All right, because what when he came, when Yahweh Shah came, his coming was ultimately for uh the nation of Israel to receive mercy and and not condemnation. That's why you have. Ooh, I gotta get that. Let me see. That's um. That's um. Oh yeah, let's get that in the book of um. This is, this is the book of John, chapter 3, verse 17. It says, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. All right? So he didn't come to, to condemn the world, but he came to save the world. And that's coming through mercy and grace. All right? Through mercy and grace. For those who are worthy and predestined, by the way. All right? For the elect, the chosen, the collectos, bachayaryam. All right. <clears throat> all right. So let's go. Let's get uh, the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter five. This is Matthew chapter five, verse seven, and it reads: "Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy." Right. So if you show mercy to others, you know, instead of, you know, because sometimes we can get in the self-righteous spirit, which is ultimately Satan, because Satan wants us to, you know, you know, essentially not, you know, bring forth righteous judgment and, and, and judgment of mercy. Right. And he, the Satan wants us to condemn ourselves because by you having an over-righteous spirit at times in certain situations of judgment, you can condemn yourself or you can fall into hypocrisy yourself. 
uh, you, uh, you you can recall the the, uh, the parable that I believe it was um, Nathan, if I'm not mistaken, uh, gave to uh, King David of the man who had the uh, the lamb. And I speak to those who are familiar with the, the scriptures. You know, the um, individual who had the lamb, but it was taken from him, um, you know, which was basically a parable by him taking away that man's wife and committing adultery with her. All right. And David, what he was. He was in the spirit of condemnation to kill that man, but really it was talking about himself. So, and, and guess what? King David, he represents the elect, all right? King David embodies the elect because even the elect, we have um, fallen short from um, the the law. We, we have we have gone off, man, all, every single one of us, you know, and that's why, that's why Yahweh Shai is so important. That's why Yahweh Shai is so imperative. All right, so let's see here. Let's go Luke. This is the book of Luke, <clears throat> chapter 6. All right, this is the book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 36. And it reads, it says, Be ye therefore merciful as your Father also is merciful. You know, and what, what comes to mind? John, chapter 3, verse 16. It said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. All right, and who, what world is that talking about? It's talking about cosmos, which is that harmonious arrangement or that governing body of the nation of Israel. And it says that he gave his only begotten son, which was Yahweh Shah, that, and that whom, whomsoever believes on him should not perish but have everlasting life. All right? And that was the Lord showing mercy by giving his son as a sacrifice for the remission of the sins of the nation of Israel. That is written in the book of Acts. Lord, will thou at this time restore the kingdom unto, unto Israel? All right. <clears throat> now this is Hebrews chapter eight. We're gonna wrap it up with Hebrews. All right. This is the book. Uh, where we at? All right. This is this is the book of Hebrews chapter eight, verse twelve. It says, "For I will be merciful to the excuse me." It says, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and their inequities will I remember no more. So how much more so us with dealing with, you know, people around us, man. All right. Brothers, you know, your wife, uh, you know, your children. All right. Different individuals, man. Hey, you know, of course you utilize discernment. You don't just, you know. You know, let judgment, you know, be compromised. But you have to remember and through spiritual discernment, you know, exercise the, um, basically the law of Yahweh Shemiah which uh, resides mercy, all right? You know, which resides mercy, all right? So, you know, consider your ways. Self-examination is important, and you know when we realize how many times we've fallen short and how disappointed in which we are of ourselves, we also have to consider that you know the Lord has showed mercy to us and He's bestowed this truth, this ministry, the opportunity to continue to fight and labor for His name and His will and to receive salv salvation. That same mentality in which the Lord bestowed uh, or enacted in His relationship with us. We have to enact in our daily regiment, in our daily interaction with those in whom we are around. So, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I'm going to give all praises, honor, glory, and worship to Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Rechakodash, of course, the abundance to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. The salutations to you, Akim. Continue to labor, keep the faith, Ababa Ba, Kwamba Shalom.